So, you guys got goalied. What do you mean we got goalied? We won the game. Doesn't getting goalied imply losing? Yes, but just because we won doesn't mean we didn't get goalied. Have you seen the shot numbers for this game? Oh my god, I hate Connor Hellebuck. Well, I'm just as surprised as anybody else is. Vegas Golden Knights win 2-1 to one in overtime over the Winnipeg Jets. Now, this game had a lot of different flavors to it. The only thing that remained the same from the last game for the Golden Knights is that the lineup was the exact same, only difference being Aiden Hill draws a net with Logan Thompson getting the night off. So the start of this game against the Winnipeg Jets was a little bit of a um, interesting affair, but also run of the mill for a Golden Knights start. We were the dominating team again, landing six of the first seven shots through the first seven minutes of the game. And it was at this point that any casual hockey fan could tell that Connor Hallebuck, the Winnipeg Jets goalie, was on his game tonight. And, you know, he made a couple of really good saves early on in that first period, and this would become a bit of a recurring theme. Um, there was a, unfortunately, the uh, Golden Knights wouldn't land the first real scoring opportunity, as that would be given to Neil Pionk of the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, that re that was basically the result of an extended defensive zone time for the Golden Knights, and ultimately wound up being a slap shot from just above the circle, which Aiden Hill came out, challenged, and just caught off the shoulder for what I believe was like one of his first or second save of the game. Ultimately, the Golden Knights would keep layering on the pressure as they would go to the power play um, early on in the form of a Dillon interference penalty at 7.47. Uh, he got handcuffed by bouncing puck along the wall. Nick Wall was skating right at him. I mean, if you were being skated at full speed by Nick Wall, I too would try and get in his way. And so I can't really blame him. Uh, there was a lot of good early passing plays, particularly a good passing play from Eichel to Stevenson and Stevenson to Stone on a one-timer. Um, but the And the puck was in the zone for a good while in this first wave, and there was a lot of good puck movement. Uh, the second wave was a little bit more discombobulated, but still managed to land a shot. Ultimately, while the Golden Knights weren't able to score, they were able to land two shots on this power play, so it was a pretty good way to get going. Uh, shortly, after the or shortly after the power play, Amadio uh, almost had a breakaway, but he was just a little bit too slow after forcing a turnover on the defensive blue line. That was about halfway through the period. And then a glorious opportunity for Haig on a jam play. Uh, just missed. Uh, this, was, this save will go down as a probably a save of the year candidate. Haig had a wide open net on a rebound in the low slot and Hellebuck simply reached back with the paddle of his stick and knocked it out of the air and throw that one in Steve's paddle save emporium because it was an incredible save and it was at this point that I knew it was going to be really hard to get one past Connor Hellebuck tonight. Uh, shortly after that great chance from Haig, Carlson uh, and Smith had a good one-timer play on a Winnipeg uh, turnover in their zone and resulted in yet another high score, high percentage scoring opportunity for the Misfit line. And uh, at this point in the game, with about seven minutes to go in the first period, the Misfit line had seven of the 13 total shots for the Golden Knights in this first period. And they would continue to do a little bit more work as Dylan would take his second penalty of the period, this time a tripping at 1532. Uh, this came on the heels of a really good zone entry from the top line and a good cycle play. Ultimately, Dylan wound up dragging down Eichel or else you know he was gonna get posterized. Uh, this started. This power play started off with the second unit, obviously because the first line was out on the ice when the penalty was drawn. Uh, the second unit had a pretty good chance in front. Um, uh, Waugh passed it between the legs uh, in the low slot to Smith. Ultimately, Smith wasn't able to fire it home as Hellbuck was, you know, there again. Um, and the first line never really got established, but ultimately um, there wasn't really any uh, shots, any much pressure on this power play. Following the power play, again, there was another fast break two-on-one from Amadio and Howden. Uh, and Howden beat the goalie, but he couldn't beat the post on a really good tip play just in front of the net on the two-on-one. And then the dying seconds of the period, Carrier had a um, good opportunity, low shot on uh, Hellbuck right as the period was expiring that, you know, continued to make the game interesting. So looking at the first period in retrospect, it's pretty clear that we're going to get goalied at this point. Um, we are getting goalied so unbelievably hard at this point. Uh, every line is looking really, really good and look better. We, the Golden Knights look better in every facet of the game at this point when compared to their uh, counterparts on the other side of the ice in the Winnipeg Jets. We're out shooting them 18-4 to four through one, um, <laughs> which is really indicative of how dominant the Golden Knights were that period. 53% from the dot, eight hits, and three shot blocks. So ultimately, despite only being uh, tied up 0-0, the Golden Knights are by far the better team. 
with the only exception being they don't currently have the better goalie. Aiden Hill had a quiet night through the first period, and Connor Halbuck was unbelievably busy, and odds are those trends were going to continue into the second period. And so despite the really good first period the Golden Knights had, they kind of came out and kind of got a lackluster start to the second period, as the Winnipeg Jets were definitely the better team in the opening moments of the second frame. Uh, that was until a really good two-on-one from Waugh and Howden. Uh, that was just a really good shot, but a better save again. And ultimately, following that chance from Howden and Wah, the Golden Knights would go back on the power play for the third time as Morrissey would get whistled for a cross-checking penalty at 540 of the second period. On this power play was just another really good one. Uh, Marcia so had a really, really, really golden opportunity. Hellebuck being sold out for, for a uh, scramble play to the left of the net. Puck kicks out to the right of Marcia so, and he fires it off the near post behind Hellebuck. Basically, the puck went through his legs, off the post, and then back out the other side. Ultimately, not even landing a shot, but providing just another fit of energy for the Golden Knights on this power play. Their power plays looked really, really good, and Hellebuck has just looked a lot better. Um, ultimately, the first wave was very productive, even outside of that chance. Uh, the second wave had less great chances, but they still forced a lot of pressure, landing a couple of shots, with this power play accounting for three shots, but still no goals, which is really, really frustrating. Um, halfway through the game, the Golden Knights are out shooting the Winnipeg Jets 26-7. to I'm going to say that again. It was 26-7. to 26-7, to yay! So despite being dominant on the scoreboard in terms of shot totals, up 26-7 to again, um, one would think that the Golden Knights would get a little bit frustrated and kind of try and start picking corners and the offensive production would start to go down. That would be the exact opposite of what would happen as just a few minutes after the halfway point of the period, uh, Zach Whitecloud would get a really, really good chance on a feed from below the net from Will, or from uh, Phil Kessel, who I, I'm convinced Whitecloud scores this goal 99 out of 100 times, but because it was kind of late in the period, the ice was a little bit choppy and it looks like the puck just like rolled off his stick or bounced right before it got to him because he had basically the whole net to hit and he just whiffed on it, not even registering a shot. Uh, so at this point, according to moneypuck.com, who is really, really good at figuring out the statistics of a game and what the score should be, the Golden Knights had a 98% chance of winning this game despite it being knotted up at zero. And the expected goals scored, the expected score according to the stats and chances, was four to nothing Golden Knights. That was about five minutes to go in the second period. So it was very clear that we're getting absolutely monumentally goalied by Connor Hellebuck at this point. Uh, a good chance late in the period from the top line doesn't amount to much. And ultimately, through two periods, it's still scoreless. So we are still getting absolutely fundamentally massively goalied. Shots are 33 to 8 overall, 15 to 4 in the second period in favor of the Golden Knights, who have recorded 15 blocks and 13 hits. Despite another basically perfect period for the Golden Knights, it's still 0-0. You can't really ask for much more from the forward core because they've been just basically, they put Hellbuck under siege for 40 minutes and you can't really ask much out of Aiden Hill. He's made eight saves and he's basically had time to go off the ice, get a box of nachos, come back into the net, eat his plate of nachos, skate back off the ice to throw them away, change helmets, go back in and then make a next save. That's how slow it has been for Aiden Hill this night. And so you can't really fault any of the Golden Knights game. And all you can really ask them to do is kind of keep it going, going into the third period. And so I'm sure in the dressing room between the second and third period, all the leadership of the team jumped up and probably said something to the effect of, this game can be changed by a single shot on net. Now, I'm not sure which locker room that was spoken to, probably both locker rooms, but clearly the Winnipeg Jets took that sentiment a little bit more to heart as to open up the period on the very first shift, on the very first shot, of the third period in a 0-0 game in which the Winnipeg Jets are getting massively, fundamentally outplayed, Adam Lowry puts the Winnipeg Jets up one to nothing just 14 seconds into the period. I gotta get on Aiden Hill just a little bit. I know I just said to give him a break because he's fielded eight shots through 40 minutes, but he has to eat this one. This shot from the point hit him basically right in the Golden Knights crest and it popped out in front of the net, basically on a pizza and Lowry was just right there to fire it home from the low slot. 
So this was Lowry's second goal of the season from Pionk and Barron at 14 seconds of the third period. And at this point, I reacted like this. All right, people, it's over, pack it in. How are we ever gonna recover from that? <laughs> and ultimately, while those aren't my brightest moments as a hockey fan, uh, that's a very warranted reaction as the Golden Knights historically have never been particularly good when they're getting goalied and they give up the first goal. This game reminded me a lot of a couple of years ago in the playoffs in the bubble, especially coming into the third period, of Game 7 against the Vancouver Canucks in the um, quarterfinals that year, where we could not get anything past Thatcher Demko, and we knew it only was going to take one goal in Game 7. just came down to who was going to score that goal. Ultimately, history says we scored that goal, and historically, when we don't score that goal, the game doesn't tend to go our way. So being down one to nothing, despite dominating the game at this point in 2022 against the Winnipeg Jets, you've got reason to be concerned. Um, and ultimately, Winnipeg continued to be the better team immediately following that goal. They didn't land many shots, but they were dominating puck possession for the first time the entire game, uh, holding control, keeping the Golden Knights on their heels and in the defensive zone, not really able to get any forward momentum in terms of like gameplay or overall flow, as they're essentially packing it in to prevent defense, thinking that they can go out and win this game one to nothing. Um, ultimately, this kind of breaks down to the fact that the Golden Knights did not come out to start this period on time. Um, like, you know, they probably started playing five minutes in. Yeah, about five minutes into the period is when the Golden Knights really got out of the dressing room. And ultimately, that's not great for a team that was in a tie game 0-0 and then immediately gave up a goal to go down one despite being the dominant team. But ultimately, you can't really dwell on the past and you have to simply try and make what you can with the remainder of the period. At that case, there was still 19 minutes and 40-some-odd 40, 40 seconds left to go and you have plenty of time to score. I'm sure Captain Mark Stone decided to say on the bench immediately following the Jets' goal, that the game's not over, that you can't get frazzled. There's a lot of young guys on this team. There's also a lot of vets on this team who have probably been through this situation before. And the reason I bring that up is because it only makes it more poetic that the person who would give the Golden Knights life again would be the captain, Mark Stone, as he would put the Golden Knights back in the game and tie it up one to one on what I can assume is the highest skill goal I've seen him score this year. Uh, it was totally just, it, you can really give the officials an assist on this goal as Chandler Stevenson basically took down a Jets defender low in the offensive zone, tripped, took his feet out for away from him, which had the puck squirt down to Eichel. The Winnipeg Jets just stopped playing despite there being no whistle. I even stopped watching because I assumed there was going to be a penalty. I even typed penalty kill on my notes. That was, you know, I didn't hear the whistle. And then I look up and I see Eichel all alone behind the net and Stone all alone in front of the net. And obviously, when push comes to shove, Eichel passes it to Stone. Stone fires it and Hellebuck, of course, makes a save. But this is the one time he didn't swallow the rebound. And Stone, being Mark Stone, being the incredible hand-eye guru that he is, knocks the puck out of mid-air behind Hellebuck and in the net to break the seal, tying the game up at 1-1. One to one. So Stone's third goal of the year from Eichel at 7.13 of the third period is really the turning point in this hockey game. Immediately after the goal, Eichel had another really good chance on a fast break, but he just fired it wide on the same shift. He hadn't even left the ice yet. He was looking to get in on the action. Um, there was a really good chance for Waugh and White Cloud on a defensive breakdown. Haig even came in with one of his patented nuclear slap shots that Hellebuck, of course, saved. This really capped off a stretch of about five shots in about 30 seconds for the Golden Knights within, you know, two or three minutes of scoring the game tying goal. Uh, and then with about six minutes to go, Nick Waugh has got so much skill. There was a, a kind of like a dump in from the point on net and Waugh tried to tap it out of the air like it was a cross crease feed and just missed the net. Um, and then there's really, and yeah, it, they were dominating offense immediately following. And then Kessel decided to make it a little bit interesting by taking a very, very unnecessary hooking penalty at 15-12. I know Kessel's a good offensive player, but I really got to get a little bit more defense from you, Phil. Like, I know you've been in the league for a long time. You've been playing hockey for almost as long as I've been alive. Um, but that being said, you can't take that penalty at that junction of the game, especially as the Jets were starting to get back in it. 
ultimately Hill had to do a little bit of scrambling. He totally lost a puck uh, low around the net um, early on in the power or early on in the penalty kill. Um, looked behind him, obviously, as he wasn't quite sure he had it. Puck kind of kicks out, and Martinez is there to zip it down the ice. And then, as is so often the case, the Golden Knights are able to take advantage of a weird breakdown as Kessel comes out of the box and is uh, basically in all alone. The problem is the feed pass is just a little bit too hard. He tries to out-angle uh, Hevelbuck, but ultimately Kessel is just, you know, trying to throw it on net from a super sharp angle, and... While it was a super low percentage play, I would have loved to have seen it gone in, but ultimately that just wasn't on the cards for this one. And and then immediately following that, um, Nick Waugh gets a super low chance uh, right down in the bottom of the zone with about a minute to go. Uh, forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, crazy stick handling low, and ultimately fires it right in Hellbuck's pad and just another good save. And then Stone had a one-timer chance with another pretty wide open net that Hellbuck was able to stop with about two seconds left in regulation. So ultimately, the Golden Knights found a way to come back after dominating the game and at least lock up a point. Now that's frustrating in and of itself, but you can still get the extra point. You got to overtime, you were being absolutely goalied, and you came from behind. So you can't really complain. You know, uh, Winnipeg definitely got outplayed. Hellbuck made 46 saves in regulation, which is just bonkers for a goalie, especially on the road, to make 46 saves. But ultimately, overtime is where this game is going to be decided. And overtime looked like it was going to start off pretty good for the Golden Knights as they won the opening faceoff and then immediately lost it on their first rush about 10 seconds into the overtime. That would be the last time that the Golden Knights would be in the offensive zone for the majority of overtime. As Winnipeg owned possession early on in overtime, they had Marcia so, Eichel, and Petrangelo out on the ice for what I can only assume to be about a minute and a half penalty killing as they were continuing to cycle uh, all throughout the offensive zone. Uh, and so it was just kind of a really frustrating start. Like the Golden Knights weren't even able to manage possession until about halfway through overtime, with about two minutes 20 left. And even then, they couldn't manage to land a shot as they would immediately turn it over. And Nate Schmidt, former Golden Knight, would go in on a breakaway. And ultimately, Aiden Hill would be there just in time with the glove to snag it out of the air. Now, he looked like he was going to try and play it up the ice, but then he got his legs taken out. Probably should have been a penalty, but you don't want to call that in overtime. Uh, at this point, two minutes to go in the overtime, and all the shots in the overtime period had belonged to the Jets. Um, there was a, another really good save by Hill just a few seconds later uh, on a low tip from Morrissey. Fortunately, it tipped up and hit him right in his chest as opposed to you know going under his glove or under his blocker. But ultimately, that's just what it was. Uh, immediately following that stoppage, Golden Knights win the faceoff and get going the other direction on a two-on-one in the forms of Stevenson and Theodore. And uh, there was a really, really good feed from uh, Theodore to Stevenson. And I'm convinced if Chandler Stevenson is right-handed, this game ends right then and there. Only difference being he's not right-handed, he is left-handed, and he had to adjust his body and ultimately wasn't able to fire at home in time. And so the puck stays in the zone, and the top line comes out, Stone and Eichel. And this is where Jack Eichel introduces himself to the Vegas Golden Knights fan base. He takes the puck high on the left side of the zone to Hellbuck's left, skates it down below the net, doesn't see anything, gets all the way around to the right blue line up at the top of the zone, turns around and skates in. He's being you know, pursued by Shifley. He's draped all over him. Eichel's coming down the zone, left wing, or right wing, on his backhand. And in a fraction of a second, he goes from backhand to forehand, freezes Hellebuck, and tucks it in the wide open net to give the Golden Knights a 2-1 to one win. This probably has to be the loudest the Fortress has been the entire season. The, you know, and the fact that it was Jack Eichel of all players to get this goal. He just decided to say, mine, I'm going to dominate this game. I'm going to send everybody home happy. And he did. His fourth of the year from Theodore and Stone at 4.53 of overtime sends everyone home happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when it was all said and done, the Gold Knights wound up outshooting the Winnipeg Jets 48-24. to 59% from the dot. We were out hit by Winnipeg 43-21. to 21. Uh, We got absolutely goalied the whole time. The Hellbuck was definitely the best goalie. I think the expected score of this game was somewhere like six to nothing when it was all said and done 
And so the fact that we were able to walk away with two points, despite Hellbuck having what would basically be a career game, is really telling of how the Golden Knights were able to play this game. We were absolutely the better team for 59 minutes and 30 seconds of a 64 minute, 35 second game. You know, we had a couple of minutes of bad play in overtime that was saved by high end talent in the form of Jack Eichel doing Jack Eichel things and doing things that only Jack Eichel can do. And we got victimized by a slow start to the third period or else we may have won this game in regulation. Stone and Eichel were absolutely the difference makers in this game. Uh, being that they both had two-point games, Eichel assisting Stone's goal and Stone assisting Eichel's goal in overtime. But all the lines really played great tonight. Uh, Hellebuck is a premier goalie in this league. There's a reason he's won a Vesna Trophy. Uh, but the fact that Aiden Hill was able to get through what was a really, really, really slow regulation, and I think he made like seven saves in overtime. I, you know, There's a reason. He may not get a lot of credit. He wasn't even listed as a star of this game. But in my opinion, he was probably one of the most impactful players because he was able to make those big saves in overtime. Now, ultimately, everybody's going to remember the goal. Everybody's going to remember the comeback. Everybody's going to remember the absolute calamity that is the noise in T-Mobile Arena falling an overtime winner. It's unlike anything I've ever heard. But this team is now 8-2 and two through 10 games. And I haven't felt like this about a Golden Knights team in a while. The, the MO of this team is fast, it's hard to play against, and I can't remember, the, I, I know when I remember this from, but I don't want to believe that that's coming back, because any Golden Knights fan will remember what that season ended with. So, <laughs> I mean, it's exciting to see, the talent is good, the goaltending is really good, defense structure, coaching, offensive scheming, it's all working well. We've won eight games in our first ten, and we've lost two games by a combined total of two goals. There's a lot going on for the Golden Knights, and most of it is good. And this game was really a microcosm of their ability to raise their compete level and get tough when the tough gets going, you know? it's It, it was impressive, and I was really impressed by it. So the Golden Knights have a little bit of a rough stretch coming up in terms of matchups. They have to head out on the road for 11 days, They're kicking off their road trip. I think it's a five-game road trip with stops in Washington and Ottawa, and then ultimately um, resulting in another showdown with the struggling Toronto Maple Leafs in a couple in a week uh, up in Canada. So next game up on tap, obviously, like I said, is the Washington Capitals. If you like this video, uh, like it. If you really liked it, subscribe for more. Comment down below if you thought that we got goalied as well, and I will see you guys in the next one.